Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. We're here at the ADA meeting in Orlando, Florida, so there may be a little bit of background noise, but I've got Brent Thompson of TechScan with the instrument T-Scan here out of Boston. Brent, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes, well, you know, uh, we worry about three main things in dentistry, right? We worry about the decay, we worry about the perio, and then we worry about the occlusion and the joints. This is the best instrument out there for the occlusion and the joints. One third of what we're worried about. It, it, it really involves everything, the breakdown of our restorations, yep. of the perio. So this is so important. But can you tell us a little bit about te uh, uh, the T-Scan? Well, the T-Scan is basically a Di a way to get a digital picture of the occlusion. Like the intraoral camera for occlusion. Right. Okay. So in dentistry, one of the problems we have is we've, if the patient can't see it or they feel something different than what we're observing, it can get kind of tricky in treating. Oh, you bet. Yeah. And this just gives us the images that we need to, to explain it to the patient right. and the quantifiable, which has been missing, because right. things like articulating paper and waxes, they give us clues. Yeah. But it is not quantifiable, right. it's not evidence-based, and it does not give us any real information about the forces. Right. And in dentistry, there are three things we're supposed to measure in occlusion if you look at the standard textbook type things. Okay. You know, one would be they'd say that all the teeth should come together at the same time. Right. There shouldn't be any prematurities, I guess, in other right. words. Two, uh, in when you're doing lateral excursions or protrusions, you want the posterior teeth to, to, disclude. to disclude immediately, is what right. the textbook says. Now, both those statements imply that there's supposed to be a measurement of time. Right. We've never been able to look at that. When you use articulating paper, you have how all the things hit, and it's all smudged on top of each other. Right. The, the last criteria they talk about is you need to have bilateral balance, so somewhat equal forces, right. left to right, right, and some form of an equal distribution of the forces around the teeth. Okay, absolutely. And, yes. and again, that's saying, how do you quantify that? Well, you put an articulating paper here and one here and say, bite down, it's, right. it's really bad. Okay. And, so. and then you say, how does it feel? Okay, so, so tell us a little bit more about this and, and how it all works. Okay, well, for, it's a very simple device. This is the handle just plugs into any USB port of a computer. Okay. But the heart of this system yeah. is truly our sensor. Okay. And w if you could see this, there are vertical lines going up and down yep. on the sensor. Yep. And there are horizontal lines. Going the okay, on the other side is horizontal. So it's okay. a piece of grid paper. So I could hold you in centric relation if I wanted. I can take a habitual bite, yep. I can have you do an excursion, I can have you tap, tap, tap. Okay. And any, I mean, just like you can use articulating paper on a denture, on a TMJ splint, or on right. natural teeth, right. 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 you can use it there. And this is so nice because you get the full arch. Yes. All in, all in one little unit there. And the dynamic picture. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to show you how easy and accurate this is. All right, thank you. When I tell you to, just bite down and close. Bite down, open. Thank you. And okay. we could also do that in CR or something with bimanual manipulation okay. if we wanted. Alright. Okay. Now we'll also do a uh, recording of the excursion. Okay. Okay, so we'll do the excursion. Bite down and hold it. Slide right. Perfect. All right, that's all there is to it. So what we're looking at here is a three-dimensional view of the forces. So what you see here and what you see here is the same data, but this is three-dimensional. The taller the column and, and the warmer the colors, the greater the force. So like these are low force, they're in the blue. These are higher forces up here in the red and the pink. And the green is kind of a mid-range force level. We have about 13 force gradients to show. Then on the other side, we break it down into a two-dimensional view, a little more like articulating paper. And we can see the same high force mark here, but we've got our tooth numbers, and we give you a left-right percentage. So as an example, your bite, as you're com completely closed, you have 52% of your bite on one side, 48% of your bite on the other. That's pretty good. Main thing you're looking for is kind of 
have this little center of force icon be inside this target is would be a general rule that you would look at and then we'll at this point we'll just look at how you bite we'll see the dynamics that we talked about that are so important so I'm going to go to first contact this, the computer can essentially find that the first thing we see on the screen is over here on the right side on five and six we actually will click the mouse and advance forward in time in small increments so in you're hitting anterior up here on number eight and you're also over here so your anterior and to the right side is where your forces start as we advance more in time you can see that force keep picking up this is something that might on a veneer break or cause you a fremitus or some tissue uh, changes over time if you had a periodontal issue maybe that would be something you'd want to correct before as you're treating the perio so it speeds up the health and holds it so as we keep advancing see the context change you can see the center of force because all the forces are here is anterior as we pick up more bites it changes and then the left side starts to come in and we will just come all the way until you completely closed okay and there we are and so that's at the very end and you can see this high force now so we've got the 50 50 essentially in this case now it's 50 50 and per tooth we tell you the percentage of force as well so you know the dentist could then look at this data see how it matches up with the clinical uh, signs in the mouth as well as the symptoms that the patient has and whether the patient feels it on this tooth or this tooth you might be able to say oh I think the problem's here or I think the problem's here and it's why and that can be very hard without a tool like this just like it was hard to tell someone why they needed to replace an amalgam before you had the intraoral camera. They couldn't visualize it. They didn't feel a problem. It was hard for them. This makes it simple. Okay, so you can see just how simple that is. And again, you know, we look at decay, we look at perio, and we look at occlusion TMJ, the three main things in dentistry. This finally makes that real, the occlusion aspect of this, makes it simple, it makes it uh, able to see the, the amount of force and the timing of the force. This is awesome, Brent. Brent, well, thank thanks you very so much. much for showing it to us. You're welcome.